Okay, we are recording. So let me hand things over to um, group 284H to present the Sunseekers Heliostat. Thank you so much everyone for coming to our presentation. As noted, we are group 284H, the Sunseekers, comprised of myself, Alexander, Elijah, Jacob, James, Jennifer, Joshua, and Olivia. So our primary hedgehog concept and value proposition was a low maintenance and easily serviceable heliostat design. We accomplished, it, accomplished this by having our motors, wiring, electronics, and most moving parts contained within the heliostat body. We have a conventional AC power bulkhead plug to exterior power, which is easily plugged in and unplugged. We have three ports of entry to easily service internal parts. And we employed 3D printed structural components that are easily replaced if damaged. Our product's key specifications um, in line with desired cu uh, customer needs include a high range of motion and positional accuracy. Um, as seen here, we have 360 degree rotation for um, in the azimuthal direction and 90 degrees of um, elevation rotation. Uh, the resolutions are uh, 0.08 and 0.12 degrees, respectively. Um, it, um, our model has survived winds of over 120 miles per hour in testing, um, showing that it would in fact be able to survive um, elemental forces in Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, OTS parts or off-the-shelf parts um, were utilized whenever possible. Um, <clears throat> and these commercially available parts include our power supply, our motor drivers, our motors, the mirror, our sensors, switches, and our microcontroller. Um, the compact size is also highly desirable in this, in this project, and um, the size is as given, 23.5 uh, by 18 by 35 centimeters. And um, our drive also has high resistance uh, to back drive, um, which increases the effectiveness of our positioning system. The first test that our heliostat went through was the wind survivability test. Using a wind tunnel made from particle board, we tested it in two different configurations at two different uh, wind speeds. So the low speed test was done in the worst possible configuration. That is, the mirror was vertical, and a box fan was used to blow a wind of around 12 miles per hour at the heliostat, and it easily survived that test. So then we moved on to high speed wind testing done using a leaf blower, as you can see in the video. At the high speed test, we configured the heliostat into the safety configuration where the mirror is horizontal, and it survived that test easily as well. We did lose the mirror, um, which we will go into further in these slides because that informed our design evolution. And there's the video. It's wobbling a little bit, but it survived. Uh, next, we move on to our results of our laser reflection targeting test. Shown on the right is the laser setup used with the, the laser being placed above the heliostat, which was clamped to a table. On the wall, we had targets that were both at known coordinates and coordinates that were unknown to us before we started our targeting test. We were able to hit three coordinates successfully within an error of 0.5 degrees. We're also able to target a separate coordinate that um, we, uh, a target that we did not know the coordinates of, and we used um, the angle of our heliostat to get the position of that uh, target within a reasonable degree of accuracy. So here you are looking at the front side of our mirror mount assembly. The mount flanks are secured to the primary mount via the fasteners that you see here. The flanks were used to allow the mirror to be easily secured and removed, as well as because the, to print the entire mount at once, it'd be too large for the 3D print bed we used. The tabs at each corner of the flanks allow the mirror to easily slide underneath with just two millimeters of clearance between the bottom surface of the tabs and the top surface of the mount. Looking at the backside of the mirror mount assembly, you can see that there are three hinges, two to the upper housing and one hinge to the upper linkage, which you'll see coming up soon. 
All the hinges are secured via Chicago screws, which allow the mirror mount to easily rotate in the elevation, elevation axis as the motor is actuated. Below the mirror mount is the upper housing. You can see the two hinges that connect to the mirror mount, each of them with two posts, which keep the hinges level and ensure that we have great stability and accuracy with the mirror. Below the hinges is the linkage clearance slot, which has beveled edges so that we could make it as small as possible while still uh, avoiding interference between the linkage and the housing. To the right is the lid, which easily slides on and off, allowing access to the stepper motor and electronics, which are mostly contained within this upper housing. Finally, at the bottom, you can see the shared curvature, which smoothly blends into the lower body, uh, giving our heliostat some aesthetic appeal. With our everlasting strive for absolute success. I believe that we were the only group to attempt and successfully move our design off of the breadboard to a fully internally wired system. And we did this through our custom, P uh, not fully customized PCB boards, but they're little test boards that we mounted our ESP32 and A4988 uh, motor controllers onto. And this allowed us to fully solder our connections throughout the entirety of the upper housing. Uh, our wire management comes up through the clearance or the clearance hole from the lower body. And we'll, we'll see later that we mounted our power supply inside of the lower body and used the top body for all of our wiring management. These wires ran across the backside of the upper stepper motor in order to, um, <laughs> uh, in order to uh, keep all of our wiring uh, in communication throughout the top. Shown here is a diagram detailing how we actuate the mirror in the elevation using a mechanical linkage and a T8 lead screw. Uh, the linkage is uh, made of two parts and it's uh, 3D printed and they're joined by a Chicago screw. It's also mounted to the mirror using a Chicago screw. To increase the positional accuracy of our heliostat, we designed the linkage so that uh, nearly the entire usable length of the lead screw is used when we go from zero to 90 degrees. Uh, you can also see the linkage guide on the bottom of the upper housing, which is on either side of the linkage to prevent the linkage from rotating as it travels along the lead screw. Finally, when the, uh, the, when the mirror is in our safe position, that is when the linkage hits the limit switch that is on the bottom of the upper housing. The lower housing of the model was designed to be compact um, it contains the high voltage wiring, the harmonic drive um, and motor, and the power supply to the system. Um, our goal to create an easily managed and um, serviceable model is maintained by the front nameplate and the sliding panel, both of which can be removed to access the motor in the front and the power supply in the back. Uh, further, the bulkhead plug seen there at the bottom eliminates any protruding wiring and makes for quick power shutdown. Um, should the motor or should the model over rotate, uh, the plug would be pulled out and the power cut off. Our next three slides are going to go into a bit more detail on how we were able to compact our entire azimuthal rotation down into this bottom lower, bottom lower housing. Uh, the first slide here kind of details that this upper portion that contains the power supply as well as that bulkhead plug. And the reason for using that plug was to eliminate any of the tension that goes directly onto the leads of the power supply such that there is no worry or concern about wires coming loose or anything shorting. Uh, furthermore, the stepper motor to control the azimuthal direction is mounted uh, downwards in this upper section such that the azimuthal can rotate directly on its axis all in line with the motor uh, utilizing this bottom section. This bottom section contains a fully 3D printable harmonic drive. And that fully comes with an asterisk because there are some non-3D parts, printed parts that require it to move, but all of the base mechanics are fully 3D printable. This kind of details more about that harmonic drive and how we actually got it to work. Uh, instead of using a conventional harmonic drive that would have gone over budget, we were able to assemble our harmonic drive in multiple parts using this main kind of rail in the system on that harmonic base, surrounded by the guide rails that are assembled in halves around it and secured using the harmonic top. 
The only non 3D printed parts in this assembly are the drive belt and the barrel ball bearings inside of the wave generator that are not used for conventional ball bearing methods, but just to create a smooth wave, as well as the drive shaft, which was made out of an aluminum hex bar that was tuned down to a cylinder to be able to fit inside of the motor couple and the guide bearing. Lastly, this is just a better fully assembled picture of the azimuth rotation mechanism in which we can also detail the limit switch that was first designed to go on the bottom of the system that kind of hits this nub on the bottom of the base that was later then moved inside of the system to better shield it from the elements. Uh, this, nub, uh, this allows our system to move a complete 360 plus degrees, effectively allowing it to spin it in full rotations. Going more onto our wiring, this is how the actual wiring turned out. It's a bit of a mess, but we were not able to actually design our own custom PCB boards. We had to use these test boards uh, for this test. And if we were able to design our own PCB boards, a lot of this wiring could be better managed. But the middle picture also shows how the bulkhead plug kind of eliminates all the, the black wires are the high voltage wires high amperage wires from that plug directly into the power supply. And then the yellow wires move up into the upper housing to provide power to all of the components. So conducting a mechanical design analysis on our mirror mount design, we did a bending analysis to determine the required thickness of the primary mount during the worst case scenario, which we decided was a 90 mile power wind speed oriented perpendicular to the mount, which is the highest wind speed that we see in Las Vegas. And to do this analysis, we did a flat plate model and we calculated the wind pressure from that 90 mile power wind acting perpendicular to the mount at a lever arm of 115 millimeters, which is half the width of the mount. We wanted to do this, we wanted to calculate the thickness to get a safety factor of two and the results were a minimum thickness of 3.236 millimeters However, in the final design, just to be safe, we used a four millimeter thickness. Going into the design evolution of some elements of the mirror mount design, there were two cases where we initially wanted to use adhesive. One was for the attachment of the mirror to the primary mount. The other was attachment of the flanks to the edges of the primary mount. However, in our research, we found that adhesive would not be suitable for the, 20, for the targeted 20 year lifespan in the ambient conditions of Las Vegas. So for the mirror attachment, we switched to the tabs, the version one tabs we found in the wind test were too small and allowed the mirror to blow out. So we doubled their size, which was adequate to secure it for high wind conditions. For the flank attachment, we switched from the adhesive to M3 fasteners that are already used in other parts of the assembly, making this a very cost-effective solution. So for another design evolution in the mirror mounts, we have the counterweights, uh, also referred to as the earrings of the heliostat. Um, and these are simply just two extra weights that were added to the front edge of the mirror mount. Um, this was added mainly because we observed a high amount of compliance in testing it. So the mirror could rotate in either direction a, a few degrees just on its own. So by adding these counterweights, we were shifting that compliance <laughs> In, in one direction. So that way it was consistent um, the entire time. And so it could be compensated for in the code. Um, and these were stylized as suns with poker chips because poker has been a, a running theme in our group this year or this semester. So of course I had to keep up with it and then suns for sun seekers. My next design analysis is about the linkage. In designing the linkage that controls elevation, our primary concern was uh, making sure that the linkage was thick enough so that it wouldn't deflect and cause interference during operation. Um, the, the linkage was designed so that under normal loading conditions, meaning not when we're in our safety position, the deflection is less than the clearance between the linkage and the upper body. And we found that um, with this optimized design for the linkage, we won't have any problems worrying about the linkage deflecting and interfering with our design during normal operation. Okay, so then uh, for another design analysis for our inverse kinematics for the elevation. So this is using the lead screw and the linkage for driving the mirror. Um, and 
we treated this as basically two connected triangles. And so using the known dimensions of the linkage and the mirror that's pivoting, um, we, and using some trig, this can all be reduced down to this equation here on the left, where we get the position that the linkage needs to move from the zero in order to, um, that distance is based on the angle we input, but um, by solving it inversely, we can get the angle to, we can use the angle to find the distance we need to move. And then that's converted as 0 0.04 um, millimeters per step, or our um, steps per unit. Uh, considering all the electronics used in our system, uh, we performed a closed system thermodynamic analysis to ensure that the temperature within the control system would not exceed the thermal design power of 85 degrees Celsius. So from the first law and assuming steady state, uh, the work, the electrical work in was equated to the power taken in by the two motor drivers, which is 24 watts, and the power taken in by the voltage regulator, which is 54 watts. Uh, electrical work out could be attributed from the voltage regular, uh, the motor driver out to the bottom housing motor, and this was 24 watts out. So this left us with a uh, required um, heat out of 54 watts. Now the heat out term is equal to the sum of the radiative heat out as well as the convective heat out from ambient wind conditions in Las Vegas. And using the thermodynamic properties of the control box, as well as weather and wind speed conditions in Las Vegas, we found that the surface temperature of the control box would uh, be about 51 degrees Celsius, which is much lower than our thermal design power of 85 degrees Celsius in assuring that our electronics would not overheat. So the total cost for this individual model was um, found to be $178.27. Um, this does include um, given off the shelf parts that were um, available in lab. Due to the nature of, of the lab, um, these, parts were, um, these parts were used, but it is believed that were we able to find others, we'd be able to find more competitive prices. Um, so the requirement uh, for this project was $110, not including the provided parts. Um, we are well below that range, and in mass production cost, it is estimated that um, we could get it down to $65.66, not including OTS parts. Um, to, to get this discounted price, we used available bulk discounts um, from the companies that we were getting quotes from, and when not available, um, an assumed bulk discount of 25%. So why choose us? Well, our design includes features such as readily and removable paneling, uh, integrated electronics, and a simple thoughtful design. Uh, we're focused on the ease of construction and maintenance through uh, all functional parts being able to be accessed and modified readily with multiple points of access. Furthermore, through all the internal components being shielded within the housings, uh, we have no concerns with environmental issues due to dust and debris um, getting into the boxes, affecting the electronics or wearing down our parts. And additionally, the orthogonal drive of our system operates well within the required customer need of 0.5 degrees of accuracy. And so, as such, our model can provide optimal power output to the receiving tower. So in conclusion, the key features of our de design uh, include a wide range of motion, that being the full 360 degree uh, azimuthal rotation and 90 degree elevation rotation with resolutions of 0.8 degrees, uh, 0 0.08 degrees and 0.12 degrees. Our design can withstand winds up to 120, uh, over 120 miles per hour. The compact size of our design uh, makes it desirable as well. Uh, the ESP32 boards uh, embedded within the design. Uh, the microcontroller includes Wi-Fi controllability, which uh, is a big asset to the customer. Uh, we also have low compliance between all our functional parts, and we have simple assembly and maintenance through the uh, internal components. 
And additionally, we also have our shielded motors and electronics within our um, housings. And the cost of our model is $28.39 under the required customer budget. Uh, that's all for our presentation. Uh, are there any questions? All right. Um, <clears throat> we're getting lots of virtual applause uh, from the panel. Um, any any questions from the panelists? So this is uh, Rick Miles, Northrop Grumman. Uh, just a couple of things. If you could go to your uh, costs. So uh, you're not going to mass produce 3D printed parts, right? So I, I would make sure that you uh, uh, adjust that to some injection molding or, or something like that uh, when, when calculating that uh, particular cost. Um, other than that, I uh, thought in general, y'all did a, a fairly good job uh, walking through your, your, your presentation. Um, so uh, nice job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I also have a question here about the costs. Um, did you guys take into consideration the labor costs to do any of this? Um, I don't believe that this um, these costs here include labor costs. Um, and I, I believe the 3D printed parts as of right now, the, um, the discounted price was um, for bulk material. Um, mm -hmm. So that is another big consideration. And as he said, for um, parts like these um, injection molding on a large scale would, would be much more, um, would make much more sense rather than individually 3D printing parts. Right, so not only do you guys need to consider labor costs to make the parts, you're also gonna need to consider labor costs to assemble it. Um, shipping costs, you know, how are you gonna, we live in Florida, they're out in Nevada. I, if you're going to get in a car and drive them, sure, but that's going to be a lot of gas, you know, so just kind of expand your horizons here and think, okay, what is everything I could possibly need to spend a single penny on? Because um, I will tell you labor costs, that's where any business will start to really, really start to crank up some expenses. Okay, um, <clears throat> any okay. more? Go ahead, Dr. Don. Okay, uh, thank you. So uh, a great job, uh, super cool design and great presentation. Uh, the first thing I wanna comment on is that you, you guys don't have the page number, so it's hard for me to say which slides I'm talking about. So could you please change to the structure analysis? Uh, not a linkage, but the previous one, the one before this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so the bending analysis to determine the required thickness. So you are doing the analysis for the plate that holding the mirror? Correct. Uh, because I've, I heard you guys said the, the four is the thickness of aluminum. Uh, but uh, when I see your design, have you considered um, the structure analysis at the joint where it's connected to the, so it's not the plate itself, but at, at the bottom plate, you have some cladding structure right. that is the, the bottom structure. So have you considered those plates? Because if there's a small hole there, there might, there might be some stress concentration. It might be more critical or let's say weaker than the plate itself. It may fail before the plate break. Gotcha. That would definitely be a good uh, analysis to add to our final design report coming up. So thank you for that. <laughs> uh, yeah. And, and, and one thing, um, beca because I did a lot of research on about, about the uh, uh, research presentation. So one thing I want to comment on is that uh, Alexander's uh, research uh, no, presentation skill, uh, I feel like it's amazing <laughs> how he did the presentation. And I feel like, um, I would believe everything he said, <laughs> no matter it's wrong or right. It's, it's the purely the presentation skill is really amazing. I, I'm not saying that he did, he said anything wrong, but it's just a, 
uh, in terms of presentation skill, I think uh, Alexander did really well. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. Great job. Thank you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> any final questions? No? Okay. Then I think we can wrap up there. I guess my sort of just parting comment um, is, um, you know, you, you guys made this look fun and easy. So it's sort of the, the, the dream from an instructor's perspective. Um, you know, when you get a group that has such good cohesion and such good chemistry and, you know, you guys definitely had some, um, you know, challenges to overcome and, and every time you, you just did it like the earrings is a great example, right. Of you guys had a repeatability problem and you just, you know, work the problem until you came up with a solution and the solution is like super clever and super classy. So, um, it was really just a, a joy to work with you guys this semester. So I really appreciate all the the positive energy that you guys brought to class. And like I mentioned in the chat, like you guys were the first to do a whole bunch of things. And, um, you know, to some extent, I think your, your colleagues in the class did not believe that some of the things that we asked could be done until you guys did it. So um, you know, I appreciate you guys being pioneers in that respect and, and, you know, kind of proving that things could be done to lay the foundation for, for other groups to, to follow in your path. So just really appreciate you guys uh, for, everything that you did this semester to, to keep the class, uh, you know, moving forward and, and positive attitude and, you know, everything you guys brought to it. So thanks for that. I'm going to cry. Stop. Yeah. I was <laughs> Thank, you, Dr. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. you. oh, but before you, I'll stop recording before you cry, but no, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Okay. Um, well, so let me stop recording.